Thank you. Thank you for yesterday. I've already asked forgiveness for my sin of yesterday, but I'm going to do it again. My mind took over again yesterday. And then my fingers and then the computer and then that thorn took over. Lord, please forgive me. And please forgive me my other sins. And I will learn to go and through the devotions, so give us something that will stand out and get us through the day. I ask these things in your blessed name. Okay. Tuesday, April 28th. I never felt like quitting. But as for you, brethren, do not grow weary in doing good. 1 Thessalonians 3.13 Last December, Donzella Washington walked across the stage to receive her bachelor's degree in social work at Alabama a and University. She graduated magna cum laude. At 80, she became a and oldest graduate. Even though there were a lot of tears and late night studying at 1 or 2 a.m. in the morning, I was determined I never felt like quitting, she said. Now Danzelle plans to work on her master's degree and volunteer at nursing homes. We should guard against the desire to quit. Sometimes we grew weary in the work. But we should never become weary of the work the Lord gives us to do. Galatians 6 9 says, and let us not grow weary while doing good. For in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Hebrews 12 3 warns against becoming weary and discouraged in our souls. God has done so much for us, we should never become weary in doing good for him. Make up your mind to stay enthused, determined, and active in whatever task God gives you today. Never grow weary in doing good. It's always too soon to quit. Can we be casual in the work of God? Casual when the house is on fire? When people are in danger of being burned, Lucan Campbell. Earth Shaken Forgiveness by Scott Davis, Tuesday, April 28th, 2020. Scripture reading, Matthew. 27, 45, 50, yuck. Oh. The curtain of the temple was torn in two. The earth shook and the tombs broke open. People who had died were raised to life and went into the holy city. Matthew 27, 50 to 52. When Jesus gave up his spirit, when he died, set off a chain reaction from the tearing of the temple curtain to people rising from their tombs and entering the holy city. The beginning and end of this chain of events are significant. The temple curtain, which separated God's holiness from the world, tore open, and people who were dead, which according to the law meant they were unclean, entered the holy city. Matthew is showing that Jesus' death changed the relationship of the holy God to the world. Previously, God and the world were kept apart, at least symbolically, but now things would be different. At the moment Jesus died on the cross, our sins were paid for. That's earth-shaking 
rock shattering news. We're not guilty anymore. He took our guilt upon himself. Since we are no longer guilty, God doesn't have to protect us from his holiness. Do you ever think some things are too good for you? Well, thanks to Jesus, even God is no longer too good for you. That's what the torn curtain means for us. Many of the neighbors found my former church, told me they felt they were too sinful, too unclean, you might say, to visit our church. No unclean bodies from the tomb went into the holy city. Jesus' death provides all the cleansing that anyone will ever need. Dear Jesus, thank you for forgiving my sins. Thank you for dying so that I could be in your presence and with your people. Amen. April 28th, ask and you shall receive, ask and it will be given to you, seek and you will find, knock and the door will be open for you, to you, Matthew 7-7. Seven, seven. Evangelist D.L. Moody told of two Christian women who were burdened for their unsaved husbands. They agreed on a radical plan. They would each spend an hour a day praying for the salvation of their men. After seven years, the women grew discouraged and debated giving up. They could see no progress, but the women decided to persevere as long as they lived. So they rededicated themselves to the task. Three years later, one of the women was awakened in the night by her husband, who was in great distress about his soul. As soon as the sun rose, that woman hurried off towards her friend's house to tell her that God was about to answer her prayers. She was astonished to meet her friend coming from the opposite direction with the same news. Ten years of persevering prayer was crowned with the conversion of both husbands on the same day. The month of April is a good time to remember that, yes, we may pray anytime, anywhere, or anything. Don't grow, grow discouraged in prayer. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open. April 28th. Persevere. Tribulation produces a perseverance and perseverance character and character hope, Romans 5, 3 and 4. Recently, a student was asked to give a talk at his church, and he spoke of the importance of perseverance, but he didn't know how to correctly pronounce that word. Throughout his talk, he kept talking about perseverance. His listener smiled and nodded in agreement because they fully understood that perseverance really is perseverance. It's the quality of pressing forward, whatever comes. We demonstrate our integrity when we stick with our commitments without wavering, even when cruelly times arrive. The Apostle Paul emphasized this quality over and over. He told the Romans that the quality of perseverance created hopeful hearts. He told the Corinthians about his own perseverance as he labored among them and faced great oppositions. He told the Ephesians to be watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. As he reminded Timothy, but if you have carefully followed my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, love, perseverance. Let's be true to our commitments to God and others as we press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God 
in Christ Jesus. Psalms 38. My guilt has overwhelmed me like a burden too heavy to bear. My wounds fester and are loathsome because of my sinful folly. I am bowed down and brought very low. All day long I go about mourning. My back is filled with searing pain. There is no health in my body. I am feeble and utterly crushed. I groan in anguish of heart. I am like a deaf man who cannot hear, like a mute who cannot open his mouth. I have become like a man who does not hear, whose mouth can offer no reply. O Lord, do not forsake me. Be not far from me, O my God. Come quickly to help me, O Lord, my Savior. I said I will watch my ways and keep my tongue from sin. I will put a muzzle on my mouth as long as the wicked are in my presence. But when I was silent and still, not saying anything good, my anguish increased. My heart grew hot within me, and as I meditated, the fire burned. Then I spoke with my tongue. Show me, O Lord, my life's end and the number of my days. Let me know how fleeting is my life. You have made my days a mere hand's breadth. The span of my years is as nothing before you. Each man's life is but a breath. Man is a mere phantom as he goes to and fro. He bustles about, but only in vain. He heaps up wealth, not knowing who will get it. From the book of Jonah, Chapter 2. From inside the fish, Jonah prayed to the Lord, his God, He said, In my distress, I called to the Lord, and he answered me. From the depths of the grave, I called for help, and you listened to my cry. You hurled me into the deep, into the very heart of the sea, and the currents swelled about me. All your waves and breakers swept over me. I said I have been banished from your sight. Yet I will look again toward your holy temple. The engulfing waters threatened me. The deep surrounded me. Seaweed was wrapped around my head. To the roots of the mountain I sank down. The earth beneath barred me forever. But you brought my life up from the pit, O Lord my God. When my life was ebbing away, I remembered you, Lord, and my prayer rose to you, to your holy temple. Those who clung to worthless idols will fit the grace that could be theirs. But I, with the song of thanksgiving, will sacrifice to you. What I have vowed, I will make good. Salvation comes from the Lord. And the Lord commanded the fish, and it vomited Jonah unto dry land. In loving memory of Dorothy E. Taylor, mom. July 11, 1926 to July 6, 2014. God saw you getting tired and a cure was not to be. So he put his arms around you and whispered, come to me. With tearful eyes, we watched you and saw you pass away. Although we loved you dearly, we could not make you stay. The golden heart stopped beating, hard working hands at rest. God broke our hearts to prove to us he only takes the best. Lord, once again, humbly I come before you, thanking you for the reading. Jonah was an interesting story in your holy book. 
to disobey you means <laughs> quite a bit in people's lives. Our Lord, once again, I'm asking for your wisdom. Your wisdom to be poured out on my family. All of them. Every relation. The fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth generation. That are still living. Lord. If they veer off to the left or to the right. Pour out your wisdom on them and bring them back. Thank you. And now for my high school friends, if I went to school with them, and their extended family to 8th, ninth, 10th generation, please pour out your wisdom on them. So if they veer to the left or right, pour wisdom on them to bring them back looking at you. And now for the friends I have on Facebook and their extended family, also to the 8th, ninth, and 10th generation. If they take their eyes off you, please pour your wisdom on them. And as for me, Lord, before my mind even starts to wander, pour out your wisdom on me. Maybe that's the secret of putting my thorn in check. I gotta try something. Nothing seems to work. Not even thinking of you. Worked for me yesterday because I did. I thought of you as I was watching those videos. Did I turn them off? Nope. I kept right on watching them. And defiled you. And I'm sorry for that. But pour your wisdom on me, Lord. Either that or just shut this computer off. When I go there, I ask these things in your blessing name. Amen.